بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the previous section we had discussed about the structure of atom along with uh, the shapes of the atomic orbitals In this section we will be discussing the distribution of electrons within atoms or we can say the electronic configuration of atoms The electronic configuration of atoms are actually the description of the atomic orbitals that the electrons occupy within an atom Here we will be discussing only the ground state electronic configurations that is the lowest uh, energy states of uh, electrons while they are present inside the atoms. There are some basic rules that actually govern the filling of the atomic orbitals and uh, these are uh, three rules namely the Aufbau principle. Aufbau is a German word that means build up the second principle is Pauli's exclusion principle and the third one Horn's rule we will discuss these three rules one by one the Aufbau principle according to this principle the orbitals are filled up in order of increasing energy from the lowest one to the highest one for example, in this diagram, different atomic orbitals are given with respect to their energy along the energy axis. N is the principal quantum number, that is the number of shell where these, electron, uh, these orbitals are present. So the lowest energy orbital among all the orbitals is 1s, that is present in the first shell, then 2s, then 2p, 3s. 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, and so on. So this is the order of orbitals in increasing energy. So whenever electrons are available and they are to be filled up inside the orbitals, they will be following this principle. So according to this principle, the relative energies of the orbitals are given as, according to the same diagram, like 1s is the lowest one and then higher level is 2s then 2p 3s 3p and so on the second principle is Pauli's exclusion principle this principle could be explained in two parts according to this principle only two electrons can occupy an orbital and while these electrons are occupying the orbital, the spins of the electrons occupying that orbital must be paired. That is, these electrons must be having the opposite spins. Electron has two types of motions. One is the motion of electron about the nucleus. That is, uh, the, just like the motion of Earth around the Sun. And the second motion is the motion of this electron about its own axis. So because of this motion, this electron acts as a tiny magnet. So it has a north pole and a south pole. So if two orbitals, they are to reside inside the same electronic orbital, if two electrons are to be resided inside the same uh, atomic orbital, they must be having the opposite spins. So, pairing means that the alignment of the uh, north and south poles of these two orbitals must be there. So, by applying this principle, suppose we have one orbital and uh, two electrons are available. So, if we have two electrons that are to be filled up within an orbital, these electrons must be placed with opposite spins. And they can't have the same spin in the same orbital. The third rule that governs the filling of atomic orbitals is called as the Horn's rule. This rule could also be explained in two parts. In the first part, we can say when there are two or more atomic orbitals with the same energy, that means uh, these are the degenerate orbitals, and 
an electron will occupy an empty orbital before it will pair up with another electron. And in the second part we can say the spins of the single electrons in the degenerate orbitals must be aligned. That is, if the orbit if the electrons are present in uh, singly in orbitals of uh, same energy, that is the degenerate orbitals, they must be aligned, uh, that is their spin must be same. So if we take this example, for example, we are having these three p orbitals present inside a carbon atom. These three orbitals are of same energy, that is they are degenerate orbitals. And we have two electrons that are two p electron, uh, uh, two electrons that are to fill up these p orbitals. These two electrons they will be going towards two different orbit. Uh, these two electrons will be going towards two different orbitals instead of residing in the same orbital. So if they are going towards different orbitals, they will be having um, same spin. And the other situation that is they occupy the same orbital and uh, they have the opposite spin, this is not allowed. Now we look at the valence and core electrons. Inside an atom, by looking at the uh, nature of electrons towards uh, chemical reactions, we can say there are two types of electrons. <clears throat> that are the valence and the core electrons. Actually, the number of valence electrons that are the electrons within the outermost shell, this is the major factor that determines the chemical behavior of the elements. Like uh, we have uh, uh, first three periods of the periodic table and uh, the elements in the A groups of the first three periods, these are shown here along with their valence shells. So we will explain it further. First we define what are the valence electrons. These are the electrons present in the outermost shell of an atom. Whereas the core electrons, by core electrons we mean the electrons inside the inner shells. For example, if uh, for some atom the valence shell is the third shell, then the first and the second shell electrons these will be the core electrons and the third shell electrons these will be called as the valence electrons. Now it has to be noted that only the valence electrons participate in the chemical bonding and the elements in the same column of the periodic table that is they are uh, belonging to the same group they have similar chemical behavior because of the same number of valence electrons. For example, if we look at uh, uh, hydrogen, lithium and sodium, they are in the same group. They have the same number of valence electrons. Similarly, in the second group, same number of valence electrons. In the third group, same number of valence electrons and so on. Here it has to be noted that when we talk about hydrogen, there are uh, no core electrons. The only electron present, this is the valence electron. In case of lithium, there are uh, number of electrons equal to number of electrons in helium that are forming the uh, core electrons, whereas one electron out of the three total electrons of lithium, this is acting as a valence electron. In case of sodium, neon uh, gas, can, uh, as many electrons it has, the same number of electrons is there as the core electron in sodium, and there is only one electron in the valence shell. Similar is the case for the other elements. Now we look at uh, ground and excited state of an atom. Actually this terminology and this understanding these are uh, too much necessary uh, for, uh, for a better understanding of the organic chemical reactions. So suppose we have uh, an atom that contains only one proton or one electron, you can say this is a hydrogen atom. Its electron is present in the first shell. This is the ground state for this atom. 
if this electron is provided with some energy, for example, we are providing it with a photon of energy, then this electron becomes excited. And by gaining this electron, it will move towards somewhat higher energy level. So when it moves from lower to higher energy level, at this level, this electron contains an extra energy. Because of that extra energy, this electron is now somewhat energetic electron and overall this atom becomes the excited atom and this state of electron this is called the ex uh, of uh, sorry the ex uh, this state of the atom this is called the excited state we can understand with the another example suppose we have carbon atom the total number of electrons within carbon atom these are six two electrons in the first uh, shells s orbital and four electrons in the second shell, two electrons in 2s orbital and two electrons in 2p orbitals. So this is the ground state for, hydro, uh, for uh, carbon atom. When this carbon atom absorbs a small amount of energy that is enough to promote one of these two electrons that are paired up in 2s orbital, one of these two electrons, it jumps over up to this one of the uh, empty p orbital sorry the only p uh, empty p orbital so the new state becomes that previously there was one p orbital that was empty but now that also contains one electron so one electron has been moved from 2s orbital to 2p orbital so this state of carbon atom this is called as the uh, excited state of carbon Now another important thing is the uh, representation of atoms. How do we represent the atoms while we are uh, writing the atoms for making uh, covalent bonds or while we are uh, writing the, um, the atoms while making the molecular structure. So symbolic representation for atoms and their valence electrons. This is also called as the Lewis dot structure because it was devised by a scientist named Lewis. This is a representation that is used to illustrate the outermost electrons of an atom. So it has to be noted that in this uh, notation or representation, we will be dealing only with the valence electrons. So this representation is made by using the symbol of the element that is surrounded by number of dots that are equal to the number of electrons in the valence shell of uh, an atom uh, of that element. Here the atomic symbol actually represents the core, that is the number of uh, 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 electrons that are present uh, in the inner shells as well as the nucleus of that particular atom. We know that uh, the noble gases have a uh, filled valence shell, that is they have eight electrons in their outer shells, their octet is complete. The valence shell of helium, this is an exception because it contains only two electrons. This is the exception to the octet rule, otherwise its orbital is, uh, its orbit is completely filled because this is the first orbit and first orbit maximum capacity is two electrons. So helium contains two electrons in the valence shell and this is a filled shell in case of helium. For neon and other uh, noble gases, the outermost shell contains eight electrons, that is their octet is complete. And these eight electrons, these are present two electrons in S orbital and six electrons in P orbital of uh, the valence shells of these elements. Some of the representative examples of the Lewis dot structure are shown here for first uh, three periods of the periodic table for uh, elements uh, of the A group series. For example, hydrogen contains only one electron in the valence shell, so it is represented by uh, with the hydro, uh, H that is symbol of hydrogen along with one dot and this dot shows one electron. Similarly, lithium and sodium, they belong to the same group, 1A group, 
so they contain one electron each. For beryllium and magnesium, because these are present in the second uh, group, they contain two electrons, and both of these two electrons these are present in the s orbital, so these are represented by two dots. For group three, represented by three dots. Group four, there are four dots. Here you can see that two dots are shown as a pair, and one dot is shown as a, a single electron. It shows that these two electrons are present in a in an orbital that is where these are paired up. This is the s orbital, and this electron is in the p orbital. Similarly, in case of carbon, two electrons in the 2s orbital and two electrons in 2p orbitals. And uh, these are for the ground state, uh, ground states of these atoms. Similarly, is the case uh, for similar is the case for uh, silicon. When we talk about nitrogen, we have one lone pair and uh, three unpaired electrons. Similar is the case with phosphorus. Both of these they belong to 5a group. When we talk about oxygen and sulfur, they contain two lone pairs and uh, two unpaired electrons. For fluorine, six electrons are in the form of three pairs and one electron is as unpaired. Similar is the case with other halogens in group 7a. For noble gases, as we discussed before, they have uh, their complete valence shell configuration. Helium having two electrons in the valence shell, while all the other noble gases have eight electrons in their outermost shells. So in this section, we have learned about how to fill the valence shells of atoms of the elements. And uh, what is the idea behind filling the atomic orbitals with the electrons? In the next section, uh, in the next lecture, we will be discussing about the nature of chemical bond, why and how the chemical bonds are formed.